Hey guys, it's Jenny here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I have kind of rushed video. That's why I'm not ready by any means. I kind of just rolled out of bed, realized time out. Frick, I have to film this video. So I'm about to leave my dad's and it's March 3rd. So I really wanted to have this video on my camera roll so I could upload it for you guys. And I'm here with my February wrap up. Grab the tissues because ugh. I'm honestly, I've honestly been so disappointed with my reading this year so far. January was a decent month, but this month was so bad. And I know that I had a lot of stress that played into my book slump and a lot of stuff happening at home that played into it. And you know, the fact that we had a baby born, but I know I can do better than this. And I'm kind of just really discouraged by how my reading's going because I look at other booktubers and I'm like, wow, they're reading so much and they still have a life. What am I doing? Um, but I guess senior year's just kind of been kicking my butt and there's, I'm just going to say it like this. I read three books and then I read a small poetry collection. So it kind of only counted as three. Four if you want to try to pat myself on the back, but ultimately it was three novels and one poetry collection. Um, I will say that I did like everything I read this month. Uh, the lowest I read was a four. So there's that at least. And I have a good selection for March and I'm hoping some of these books that I have will pull me out of a slump. Um, that is to be determined though. So we're just gonna hop right into this pitiful wrap up. Um, the first book that I read this month was The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This was the second collection in the Women Are Some Kind of Magic series. And I really did enjoy this. I gave it a four stars. Um, I loved a lot of the collections in this, as you can see. Like I loved so a lot of the poems, um, but some of them were very repetitive. And some were very violent and I know that that was the point because um, women are always treated with such violence that that was the point she wanted to get across by um, showing violence in her words so I understand why it just wasn't the right tone for me um, although I did appreciate some of the writing and the poems and stuff like that it's just it was a little bit different so um, yeah Next, I read the, um, oh, and then I will be picking up, I hope to get the, um, the mermaid doesn't lose her voice in this one. I think that's what it's called or something like that. It's something along those lines, but there's going to be a third book and I definitely want to get that and add it to my collection. So the second book I read in February was The Iron King by Julie Kagawa. Um, this is the first book in the Iron Fae series and this was our school's book club book for February and I actually really enjoyed this more than I thought it was more than I thought I would I've had this book on my shelf for a really long time all the way back like one of my first couple orders from thrift books um so you know that was a while ago that was like three years ago um so I've had this for a while and this is my new copy well this is actually my old copy um, our librarian gives us new copies of books that she picks and I donated my copy to the school for an extra copy for the kids that read it um, and stuff because I didn't need two copies. So um, this is about a girl named Megan Chase who has a secret destiny, one she never could have imagined. Um, she's always felt slightly off since her father disappeared before her eyes when she was six and she's never really fit in at school or at home. Um, so a dark stranger begins watching her from afar and her best friend becomes strangely protective of her. She senses that everything she knows is about to change. Um, and it turns out she's the daughter of a mythical fairy king and is, pawn and is a pawn in a deadly war. And yeah, I didn't think I was going to enjoy this, but I actually really did. I ended up giving this a 4.5 stars. Um, I really enjoyed the magic aspect and the fantasy aspect. I thought that the plot building and the world building was really good. I did like the side characters more than I liked our main character. Um, the one thing I really hated about her was how naive she was. Like she was so oblivious and clueless to everything going on around her. And I'm like, girl, what 
what is wrong with you? Um, but she did get better at the end of the book, which is why um, I ended up giving this 4.5 stars, just because the character development was really good. And I'm really excited to pick up the sequels. I have them in my thrift books cart, which reminds me, I really want to get those. But um, yes, I read this and enjoyed it. As did actually most of the book club, it was my suggestion that we read fantasy because I couldn't pick up the dystopian books that we were getting for book club. Like, I physically could not bring myself to. I would see a dystopian and be like, I should read that. And then I'd be like, no, sorry. I couldn't do it. So, those were the only two new books I read this month. And the next two were rereads. So, the third book I read in February was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. Um, this was my second time reading this and I kind of picked it up at a whim and I'm so glad I did. I'm just going to read the synopsis for you guys. So it says, one life to one dawn. In a land ruled by a murderous boy king, each dawn brings heartache to a new family. Khalid, the 18 year old Khalif of Khorasan is a monster. Each night he takes a new bride only to have a silk cord wrapped around her throat come morning. When 16 year old Sharzad's, Sharzad's dearest friend falls victim to Khalid, Sharzad vows vengeance and volunteers to be his next bride. Sharzad is determined not only to stay alive, but to end the Caliph's reign of terror once and for all. Night after night, Sharzad beguiles Khalid, weaving stories that enchant, ensure, that enchant, ensuring her survival, though she knows each dawn can be her last. But something she never expected begins to happen. Khalid is nothing like what she imagined him to be. The monster is the boy with the tormented heart. Incredibly, Sharzad finds herself falling in love. How is this possible? It's an unforgivable betrayal. Still, Sharzad has come to understand all is not as it seems in this place of marble and stone. She resolves to uncover whatever secrets lurk and, despite her love, be ready to take Khalid's life as retribution for the many lives he's stolen. And this is a inspired by A Thousand and One Nights. And I really, really love this story, guys. It's got the enemies to lovers trope that you guys know I'm a sucker for, aka Akomath aka shatter me um and overall i just really love this story i flew through it so fast and it just really made me want to read more even though that obviously didn't happen it made me want to um and i'm really excited to pick up the sequel and reread it because i love the sequel even more um so the last book that i read in february is actually one i haven't finished yet i only have 60 pages left though um, and that was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass, and I read this for our, my Massathon. We already had a live show. It went good. And, um, so yeah, I'm gonna read the synopsis for you guys, even though on this channel you probably already know what Sarah J. Mass is about, because she's my favorite author. So it says, Nothing is a coincidence. Everything has a purpose. You were meant to come to this castle just as you were meant to be an assassin. When magic, when magic has gone from the world and a vicious king rules from his throne of glass, an assassin comes to the castle. She does not come to kill, but to win her freedom. If she can defeat 23 killers, thieves, and warriors in a competition to find the world's greatest assassin in the land, she will become the king's champion and be released from prison. Her name is Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her. The captain of the guard will protect her. And a princess from a foreign land will become the one thing Selena never thought she'd have again, which is a friend. But something evil dwells in the castle and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying horribly, one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival in a desperate quest to root out the source of evil before it destroys her world. And um, I'm going to quickly go over how I annotate. That's just... The other sticky note on this side was just, you know, the information to book my graduation party. Um, so the pink tabs, I use that for love, happiness, or friendship. Love is usually something I feel when there's a relationship building or even a friendship building. Um, orange is what I use for funny. Yellow is used for a plethora of different things from plot twists to some of my favorite quotes. I also use it for fairy, uh, fairy, what the frick? Descriptions, like character descriptions, um setting descriptions and I also use it for suspicion because those are all things that I have very few of usually um so obviously I want lots of the same color spectrum so I sometimes double up on some things green is for the four eyes which is interesting important iconic and intense um blue is for action or exciting 
I also put in parentheses like T or shook because I'll think that when I'm reading and I won't connect that I'm thinking of action or excitement. I'll be like, oh my god, T, I'm so shook. So I had to write that in parentheses just to clarify. Um, then the light purple tab is for foreshadowing or like character ties, theories, things that I think are significant. Um, here's an example. Caltain's headaches, the black rings. I think those are significant, so I tabbed them. And that's kind of things I think of as foreshadowing. Dark purple is for sadness, heartbreak, or just things that kind of make me feel really sad. <laughs> um, and then red is obviously for annoying or angry or just things that make me very mad. So I actually really enjoyed this, as you can see. I used up all of my pink tabs and my orange tab. No, I only have a couple orange tabs left, though. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed this reread and I'm so glad that I reread it. I don't know if it's because of the nostalgia around this series, but I would give this a five stars. The first time I read it, I gave it like a four or four and a half stars, but this time I would give it a five stars because the nostalgia was so real. I love the relationships. I love the love triangle. Even the characters that I hate, I like reading about because it just makes the story so much more interesting. Um, so I really don't have any qualms about this book other than that it was harder for me to get into um, this time around. And I don't blame that on the book actually. I blame that on my schedule. So I'm overall really happy I read this. I'll probably end up finishing this tonight because I have very few chapters left and it's getting into the good part. They're getting into the duel. And I'm so pumped. Um, so yeah, these were the books that I read in February. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with them, even though there was so few of them. Um, I hope to change that next month. I'm bringing a couple books home tonight um, to kind of add to my bedside table. So I'm like, okay, it's March. Time for you to exchange out TBRs. I'm also keeping half of my TBR here because some of most of these are for um, the spring into reading a thon, which doesn't start until the end of the month. So yeah, I'm hoping to get more read in this upcoming vlog. I just miss being able to read successfully. So let's hope something changes. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in my massathon, uh, we are reading Crown of Midnight for March. I'm so excited to be reading this and annotating it because it's one of my favorites. It's definitely up there. Um, I'm pumped for this, like pumped. Um, and that live show will be on m March 30th, I think, if all goes according to plan. So um, our Massathon live shows are every last Saturday of the month, at, usually at 7 p.m., but they are on Sassy Ginger Book Obsessions channel melissa she's my co-host um and i just don't have a computer that will allow me to do the live stream so we just have them in her channel because it saves us a lot of headache um so if you want to join that there there's a video announcing it on my channel um i'll have that link down below and there's also just kind of explaining what it is but basically we just read the book you read it at your own pace and we have a discussion at the end of the month and they're usually a lot of fun. I find it very cathartic to be able to discuss some of my favorite books with other people who have also loved them. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below because I love talking to you guys. Uh, let me know if you read any of these books or what you plan to read in March. So yes, thank you for watching.